You've let me down big time. You're such a horrible person. What? What happened, Nancy? What happened? You better think long and hard about what you did. I never thought you'd be the kind of person to throw a child out in 10F weather. My grandchild is safe with me now. You should turn yourself in. I'm sorry, I can't quite follow you. What are you talking about? It's about Pearl. She's supposed to be with Guy. What nonsense. I just happened to stop by your house and she was standing right in front of the house. No way. On a freezing day like this? Is she okay? You've got some nerve, and you call yourself a mother? I'm asking if she's okay. She's fine because I took care of her. You're good at pretending to be concerned after doing what you did. I didn't throw her out. I left her under the care of Guy. What was he doing? Leaving her outside on such a cold day? I called him, and he said he had a sudden business trip and he is in Boston now. What the? He didn't say a word to me about it. You didn't know? That's impossible. You leave your little daughter outside and then try to blame it on your husband. You're such an irresponsible mother. I can't leave my precious grandchild with you. Hold on. It really wasn't me. Then who else could it be? There's no one else but you. I'm actually in the hospital. Oh. I'm just getting some tests done and will be discharged tomorrow. I've been here for three days now, and I haven't left all day today. What's wrong with you? They found a slight issue with my stomach during a health checkup. So, as a precaution, I'm undergoing further tests. Oh, I didn't know. No one told me. It's my bad then. I totally misunderstood the situation. But it's strange, isn't it? Guy wouldn't schedule a business trip while I'm in the hospital. I've clearly tell him that I have to go check up in the hospital. It's improbable that he'd go away forgetting about it. That's true. It's fortunate that you happened to come by. Otherwise, who knows what would have happened to Pearl. Anyway, I'm glad she's safe now. I'll keep her with me, so pick her up when you're discharged tomorrow. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for doubting you. No, it's fine. Thank you for saving her. I hope the tests come back clear. Thank you, I'll see you tomorrow. One hour later. Where are you? I'm in Boston for business. What's up? You left Pearl alone and went on a business trip? Seriously? Huh? It's 10F in Cleveland. You went to work while leaving her outside on a day like this. Where is your brain? What are you talking about? Do you really think that I would do something like that? Don't play innocent. Your mom messaged me. She said Pearl was left alone outside by the front door. You've got to be kidding me. I was scolded by her at first. She told me to turn myself in and said she couldn't trust me with her grandchild. Is she okay? Supposedly yes. She's with Nancy now. This is outrageous. I can't believe it. I know. What were you thinking? And you call yourself a father? I'm disappointed in you. No, it's not me. My mom is unbelievable. Huh? What do you mean? She saved Pearl, you know? 
but my boss had a medical emergency, and I was suddenly asked to take over his part. And I'm saying that's not an excuse for leaving Pearl behind. If you're trying to justify yourself, it's pathetic, so stop it. That's not it. Let me finish. I talked to mom about it. I asked her to take care of Pearl until the evening. Really? You didn't want to worry anyone, so you asked me not to say a word about your hospitalization, right? Yeah, but? I thought I could make it back on the last flight, and I told her you were working late too. So she agreed to take care of her. You could have mentioned it to her if it was an emergency. Well, I didn't want to. Why? I haven't told you this before, but when it comes to you, she can't stop complaining. What? She doesn't accept you as my wife. She meddles in Pearl's matters too. If she found out that you weren't well, she'd start saying stuff like you can't even take care of yourself. I didn't want to hear all of that. I had no idea. Why doesn't she come to me directly? You know the kind of people. They won't say it to your face, but talk behind your back. She's that type, been like that, for ages. Who knew? It's a bit shocking. It's just that if I'd told you, it would've only made you upset. And it was hard for me too. Sorry for keeping quiet. You looking out for me. Thanks. But using my work as an excuse to ask her for help might have upset her too. She doesn't really bring that up much. We do give her $500 every month you know. It's thanks to you. I see. It's like making money, but not slacking off as a wife or mother. She's pretty tough, huh? Something like that. She doesn't seem to like that I help with housework and parenting either. I know she's old-fashioned. Anyway, going back to the point. Something isn't right because I left Pearl with her, but she was found alone outside. Especially today with the news talking about this record-breaking cold wave? It's freezing even at midday. Leaving a small child outside on such a day is just not right. True. But if this was all to brand me as a bad mother, it does make sense. Oh, Jesus. My own mother would do something so awful. I'm really worried about Pearl, so I'll cancel the remaining tests and go back home right away. You can't leave work yet, right? It looks like I won't make it home until tonight. But will the doctor allow you to leave? I think he'll understand if I explain the situation. I feel bad but I'll reschedule the tests for another day. More importantly, if something happens to Pearl, I'd regret it for all my life. You're right. I'm sorry too. I shouldn't have accepted the trip at a time like this. And I'm sorry for doubting you. I should know better than anyone that you're not the type of person to do something like this. It's my mom who's in the wrong. I can't believe things turned out like this. I need to hurry. I'll let you know how it goes. All right. Later that night. Are you okay to be discharged earlier? You didn't have to trouble yourself to rush back just for tonight. I could have taken care of Pearl, you know. You could have finished your tests with peace of mind. I can't trust someone like you with my precious daughter. Why are you talking to me like that? Is that how you talk to the person who saved your child's life? Yeah, right. I hear you're talking bad about me behind my back. Guy told me. What are you turning me into a bad guy here? 
Don't you think there's an issue on your side too? Weren't you planning to leave Pearl outside, get the police involved, and kick me out? My hospitalization was an unexpected turn of events, huh? Can you stop speculating? Guy left her with you and went on a business trip, right? So why did you come to the house? It's strange, isn't it? Your arguments don't add up. He's lying. He never asked me to take care of her. It's weird to casually visit our house early in the morning on a snowy day. I have business to attend to, even in the bad weather. In 10 half? This is nothing for a woman from the north. You wouldn't understand coming from the tropics. Whatever. So you say guy's lying. Your son, unfortunately, left his beloved daughter out in the freezing cold and went to Boston. He's a heartless person. That's what you're saying, huh? Exactly. My own son is a disgrace. Due to his job, he has an app that automatically records all phone calls. And? He says there's a recorded conversation with you early in the morning. But are you still going to deny it? I'm getting old. I have no memory of making such a call. If you have evidence, let's hear it. I sure do. It's about time you admit it. Yeah, I agree. So, Guy? What are you talking about? That conversation was scripted with Jane. It was a quick improvisation, but it turned out realistic, didn't it? You're quick-witted, Nancy. What's the point of all this? It makes no sense at all. I wanted to see how you'd react. But you just stayed quiet and followed the argument between us. You couldn't say anything because you knew you'd expose yourself if you did, right? I couldn't believe it when you told me that Nancy was talking bad about me. She's always been so kind and cared about both Pearl and me. But I also wanted to believe you. I struggled a lot with who to believe. Of course, it should be me, right? I'm your husband. Your hard-working husband is more worthy of trust than your mother-in-law, who only complains about you, right? That's true. Assuming you're really an honest, hard-working husband. So, first I decided to confirm whether your business trip was real. Why? You got the job through connections from your late father, right? I still send Christmas cards to the CEO, so we're still in touch. Seriously? I was told there was no employee who was out on medical emergency today. And there were no plans for a business trip to Boston. Darn it. I can't believe I'm busted so easily. So you're still in Cleveland, right? Where exactly are you now? I'm at a cafe. I just wanted some time alone. It's only been two days, but taking care of Pearl turned out to be more challenging than I thought, and I was getting frustrated. Like this morning, she refused to listen to me. She didn't want to go to the aquarium and kept asking for ice cream. She was being so demanding, so I thought I'd let her cool off outside for a bit and reflect. And then? Even though you knew it was a record-breaking cold wave, you left her outside and ran away, right? I wasn't planning to stay out for a long time. But when I came back after about 30 minutes, she was gone, not at home or anywhere. I panicked and started searching for her. Then I received your message saying that mom took her back in with her. Your story is making no sense. The first person who called you was supposed to be Nancy, right? That's when you lied about going to Boston. Oh, did I? I don't remember the details. But why did you try to frame her? 
If you admitted the guilt and apologized right then, all this trouble could have been avoided. But if I said I left Pearl outside, you would have gone berserk. Of course. So I felt bad, but I had mom take the blame. I would never do something like that to my grandchild. My bad. I've been pretending to be a hands-on dad, but the truth is, I can't handle her at all. Dealing with her just frustrates me. But you seem to be doting on your other child quite a bit. Ha! Huh? I heard that company phones have GPS to track location. So I urgently hired a detective to keep an eye on you. You're kidding. You were carrying a boy around three-year-old on your shoulders and taking a walk in the cold. You seemed pretty happy. That's not. I became certain after seeing the photo. You wanted to get rid of Pearl because she was in your way, right? You intentionally left her out in the cold and wanted to see what happened. In reality, if Nancy hadn't come, it might have turned out fatal. It's truly terrifying. That's absolutely not true. On the contrary, you tell dirty lies. A child has no reason to make up such stories. It's just a way of discipline. We promised not to raise our voices at her, but she said you did all the time. She's misunderstanding it. I got worried you'd done more than that so I checked her body in a panic. There were no bruises or injuries. But I suspect you have without leaving marks and made her keep it a secret. This is more malicious on your part. No evidence means I'm innocent. Don't insult me with your delusions. What traumatized her the most was when you said that she was unwanted and that she and I should go far away. Everything you've done, I'll never forgive you for it. Me too. I'll never forgive you for causing so much pain to her. I've never said such an awful thing. Don't be fooled too, Mom. It's all lies. You're fabricating affairs and abuse to frame me. I wouldn't bring up such serious matters without evidence. You know the stuffed bear Pearl carries around, right? No, I don't. It's like a walkie-talkie. We used to play with it together in the house. It has a recording function, you know. You can probably figure out where I'm going with this. You mean, there's no way something so convenient could happen? Well, it did. I distinctly heard your voice saying that she was an unwanted child. That's... I deluded myself into thinking you were a good father, and I couldn't protect her from you. She's hurt because of me. So, I deserve punishment too. That's not true, Jane. I was close to you guys, so I share the blame. It's also my fault for raising a son like him. But there's someone who should be punished before us. We should make sure he pays the price, and then we can accept our own punishment. Nancy. Please, both of you, give me a break. Toys can't be used as evidence. A three-year-old boy and uttering horrible things to Pearl. I connected the dots. You saw us as a handicap. You deliberately left Pearl outside, hoping she'd disappear. But then I came along, so you used the situation. You made me the bad guy, hoping Celine would push her divorce because she wouldn't want to be near such a terrible mother-in-law. That's right. I failed, though. You love that little boy more than Pearl, don't you? Then you should have told me earlier. A jerk like you, I'll gladly pass you to the other woman with a thank you note. I hope she'll be thrilled to receive you. I figured that you'd make a fuss about alimony. I didn't want to deal with it. Of course. A traitor must be held accountable. Isn't it logical? How much? 
300k would do. What? This house and savings would be about 250k, plus 50k as alimony. That's outrageous. I'm aware of the going rate. At most, it's around 50k, not 300k. The amount reflects the anger of Jane, Pearl, and me. And you'll have to make amends for it. So what am I supposed to do then? I'll have no money, and how would I raise my precious son? You idiot! Don't rank your children. Pearl is your daughter too. I wanted a son. But Jane went ahead and had a girl. I'm not to blame. It's your fault for not having a boy, Jane. Nancy, I don't want to talk to this person anymore. I'm getting nauseated, too. We'll stay at a hotel tonight. I have a meeting with a lawyer tomorrow, so could you please take care of Pearl? I don't know how much damage this jerk has caused on her, so I want to consult with a psychiatrist too. Honestly, I feel like my stomach is going to have a hole from the stress. It may not be only for the medical tests next time I go to the hospital. Oh no, that sounds tough. Well, yes, I'll look after her. I can even accompany you. Thank you. Rest well. Yes, I'll hold Pearl close in bed. Good night. Okay. A few moments later. Seriously? You're still hanging around like a persistent mosquito? I thought I made it clear that I want nothing to do with you. So, do me a favor and disappear already, will ya? Wow, Mom, you really know how to twist the knife. You know, it's funny how you can turn your back on your own flesh and blood so easily. I thought being your precious son would count for something, but I guess I was wrong. Let's get something straight, Guy. You are not, and never will be, my son. And don't think for a second that I won't report all of your shady activities to your boss. I mean, come on, you're practically a walking, talking criminal. They'll probably fire you faster than you can say handover. Why does it have to come to this, Mom? Can't we just talk things out like a normal family? I don't want things to end like this. Talk things out? With you? That's a laugh. You've made your bed, Guy, and now you have to lie in it. You're so pathetic that I can't even summon a single tear for you. Please, Mom, I'm begging you. I know I've messed up, but I need you on my side. I need someone who believes in me, even when I don't believe in myself. Can't you find it in your heart to stay by my side? You really don't get it, do you? I've spent years trying to believe in you, trying to see the good in you. But you've let me down time and time again. It's hard to keep standing by someone who constantly disappoints. But hey, if you want my advice, clean up your act and maybe, just maybe, you'll find someone who's willing to stick around. But as for me, I'm done. Goodbye, guy. The man was charged with abandoning and verbally abusing Pearl, resulting in him losing his job. He attempted to seek help from another woman, but she refused to acknowledge him as the father due to his unemployment and warned him to stay away. Despite causing harm to my family, she acted arrogantly. I am planning to have a face-to-face -face meeting with her, although I have not yet forgiven her. It is worth noting that her son and Pearl are half-siblings. Guy lost everything money, home, family, and the opportunity to have a legitimate child. It would have been preferable if he had gone to prison, but instead, he received a three-year probation. He now survives by doing day labor and living day by day. On that day, Nancy happened to stop by our house after going to the post office to mail an urgent letter. Thanks to her, we can still see Pearl's smile. I can't help but feel grateful when I think about what would have happened without her. 
With the help of counseling, Pearl did not suffer any trauma. Currently, Nancy, Pearl, and I live together, and having three women in the house brings a sense of enjoyment.